Hi, welcome back to Curator on the Loose. I'm Matthew Burchette. I'm the senior curator at the Museum of Flight in sunny, go figure, Seattle today. And we are checking out this guy, the F-4 Phantom. Now, did you know that the F-4 Phantom actually wasn't really designed as a Phantom? No, 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 no. In 1953, the Douglas Aircraft Company, well, they needed some income. So they started thinking and they went, you know what, we're gonna go to the Navy and we're gonna offer up our services. So they went to the US Navy and said, hey, have we got a deal for you? We're gonna take our F-3H Demon and we're gonna turn it into a Super Demon just for you guys. And the Navy went, no, we really want an all-weather fleet defense fighter. So McDonnell said, okay, we gotcha. And they took their Super Demon and they added a guy in back and turned it into the Phantom. Now originally they decided to call it Satan. That didn't go over so well. So luckily they took their Phantom name from their earlier Phantom and this guy became the Phantom too. And there are some really cool things about this plane and today we're going to check them all out. One of the really distinctive features of the F-4 that everybody recognizes is this intake and this splitter vane. Now, what's so cool about a splitter vane? Well, in this case, all these holes, and we're gonna do a little B-roll action so you can see them up close, 12,800 holes per splitter plate. It's nuts. Now, why are they there? It has to do with the way the air gets sucked into the engines. And we're gonna go a little bit high-techy tech on you. It's a boundary layer issue. And the boundary layer is the air that's really, really close to the fuselage. It goes a little bit slower and a little bit rougher. And so the splitter plate takes that boundary layer air and it pushes it to the side so that the smoother air goes into the engine. Well, these tiny little holes actually suck some of that boundary layer that's jumped over and it gets sucked in toward the fuselage to smooth that air out even more. That is really cool. I don't understand it, but it's cool. Okay, let's go check out the aft end of these guys because there's a lot of stuff we got to talk about engine-wise. All right, like I was talking about up front, these big J79 engines could kick out a ton of thrust. In fact, 17,000 pounds of thrust a piece in afterburner. That's amazing. And that kind of power kicked this guy up to Mach 2 plus. That is moving. Now, the other thing we were talking about when we were up front is some of the really distinct features that make the Phantom, well, the Phantom. And it's this guy here, the tail planes, they're angled downward. And that is a huge distinctive feature of this aircraft. And once you see it, you know exactly what you're looking at, an F-4 Phantom. Now, why are they looking like that? They're angled downward at 23 degrees anhedral. And anhedral means basically they're just pointing downwards. Dihedral points up. There you go, words for today. Anyway, they point down at 23 degrees for two reasons. One, they're out of the way of the, the exhaust plumes here, but also they give this thing a lot better maneuverability at high angles of attack, which you really need if you're a carrier plane, which this guy was built to be. Makes a lot of sense. But let's go check something else out that really gives the Phantom that Phantom look. One of the things that gives the Phantom its real Phantom look, that distinctive look, are these guys, the wingtips. And they point up, remember, dihedral at 12 degrees. When McDonald was designing this plane, they realized that they needed to give their wing five degrees of dihedral for better maneuverability. Well, they didn't want to redesign the entire wing, so they just kicked up the wingtips at 12 degrees. And on average, that gave the entire wing 
about five degrees of dihedral. And so that's why the wingtips kick up like this. It's really cool. Last week we were talking about the MiG-21, and if you haven't seen that episode, I'm highly disappointed. Anyway, in that episode, we were talking about how our version, a PFM, didn't carry a gun. It carried a big gun pod. Like this one. This is actually an SUU-16, which carries a big monster 20 millimeter rotary cannon, which could kick out the rounds at a high rate of speed. Now, why do you need something like this? Because the F4, when it was originally designed, wasn't equipped with a gun at all. It was designed to carry missiles, like this AIM-7 Sparrow above my head, or to my right, a couple of AIM-9 Sidewinders. It was really designed to be a missile aircraft, which was a great idea until it came down to actually fighting with these things. In Vietnam, unfortunately, our AIM-9s and AIM-7s weren't that reliable. The 9 especially, it was a hot, humid environment, and the AIM-9 is a heat sinker. It's got a lot of things to log onto and not necessarily a MiG-21. So we needed to come up with a way to strap a cannon to this bad boy, and that's what this guy did. That's really cool. So one of the things I love about doing these video series and working here at the museum is I'm always learning stuff. You may have noticed when we were talking about the engines, there looked like there was some writing on the arrestor gear of this aircraft. Well, you were right. And we're gonna go talk about that right now because it is nuts who signed this plane. Let's go. Like I said, one of the things I love about working here is all the little things that I learn about when I'm out on the floor. Like this signature right here. We were talking about the engines and I noticed this signature and I noticed the name and it's Bob Pardo. Yeah, that Bob Pardo. And if you don't know the story, here it is. So Bob Pardo and his wingman were over North Vietnam on March 10th, 1967, and they got hit by anti-aircraft fire in a big way. And if you know anything about the air war in Vietnam, you know that you don't want to go down over North Vietnam. So what do you do? Well, Bob started really thinking outside the box. He had his wingman drop his arresting gear, his tail hook, and Bob came up behind him and literally began to push his wingman's plane with his own plane. So his wingman shut off both engines, dropped his hook, and Bob came up and put the very front part, the armored glass part of his windscreen, right up there on the end of the tail hook. He pushed him 88 miles got him into Laos where they were able to eject and then were picked up by friendly forces. It's now come to be known as Pardo's Push. Here's the crazy part. Every 15 to 20 seconds, it would slip off of the windscreen and he'd have to readjust. And by the time they got over Laos, they were only at about 6,000 feet, but he got his wingman home. And then, at one point, he came into our museum and signed our tail hook. That is so awesome. I love this kind of stuff. Now, let's go right back up front. We're going to talk about our plane, and then I'm going to send you guys out into the world for another week of fun quarantine stuff. When we were down under there, Talking about the SUU-16 gun pod, that has everything to do with this little guy right here, the Spook. Now, what's he carrying? An SUU-16 gun pod, the gun fighters. That's what the 366 tactical fighter wing became known as in Vietnam because they were the first to carry this big gun pod. And our aircraft flew with the 366 in Vietnam, but wait, there's even more. Bam, check it out. Three MiG victories, all MiG-21s. May of 67 with the SUU-16 gun pod. 
May of 67 with an AIM-9, and then April of 67 with an AIM-7. So basically, this guy just shot down MiGs with everything it could carry. That's really cool. But you know what? The history doesn't stop here. It actually continues because this guy came back from Vietnam and then flew with the Oregon National Guard for many years and now is on loan to us through the USAF Museum in Dayton. That is really cool and we are really, really proud to have her. We're also excited that you guys keep tuning in to watch us. That's a big deal. Now, you are stuck at home, so yeah, we understand you kind of have to come see us, but you don't, and we really appreciate that you do. So, thank you so much. We're gonna move to a couple of commercials, and then we will see you next week. All right, now it's on to the commercials. Like I said last time, if you're interested, go check out our store. We've got a great online store with tons of really cool stuff. And guess what? If you buy $50 worth of stuff, we'll ship it to you for free. Go load up on F4 Phantom Books and merch. That would be an awesome thing to have. Also, thank you guys so much for everything you are doing for us with your donations. Big or small, they make a huge difference. We could not be here filming this stuff without your help. So thank you so much. Keep those dollars rolling in if you want to because we appreciate everything you do. Now, for the good part, the bloopers. They point up at five degrees. No, they don't. One of the things that is, that's the tail fin of a Sparrow missile, an AIM-7 right above me. <laughs> it has to do with the way the, the, and they could kick out 17, is that, is that in the way? I feel like that's in the way. That's pretty thinking. That's pretty thinking. Ugh. Hi, welcome back to... Hi, welcome back to... <laughs>